This is Rugby Merlin and welcome back to the channel. So have uh, World Rugby gone too far and overstepped the line, uh, igniting the rugby public in opposition to their proposed law changes? We're going to have a look at that in this video. So first of all, uh, what do we mean by the rugby public? So um, I'm sure you guys also follow uh, various uh, YouTube uh, channels devoted to rugby uh, as well as my own and um, also uh, the comments basically are the uh, the gauge of uh, where we are in terms of uh, a rugby supporting public a rugby union supporting public i will say that uh, most of the youtube channels that uh, cover rugby have been in opposition to some of the laws and those laws are relevant in terms of uh, the ones that they oppose are the ones that uh, give rugby union its unique characteristics, um, namely the set piece and uh, the, the mall. So uh, I think all rugby fans understand that these are kind of uh, set rugby union apart in so many ways. Uh, one of the ways is they don't exist in any other sport. Um, Rugby, rugby league included, and also that uh, rugby is often touted as the uh, sport where any uh, body type, any any kind of uh, physical size or specimen can play that sport. And uh, by taking away or reducing the importance of uh, those set pieces and the mall as well, added on to that, then that negates that kind of uh, attractiveness. Uh, world rugby or rugby in general seems to be chasing this uh, mythological uh, modern audience that uh, they think they're gonna get a, a ton more money and attract like millions of people uh, to the game uh, by changing the nature of the game that's not how it works um, you promote the game better um, you invest in countries where the game has uh, some popularity, you, you water the seeds that are already there. I mean, if you look at the uh, European Rugby Championship, there are, there are teams from all around Europe playing rugby union, you know, to varying extents. And uh, that's where you focus your energy. You don't focus on watering down the product. And uh, that modern audience that they think they're going to get doesn't exist. Many other industries have tried to chase it and they found out that uh, it doesn't doesn't exist it just evaporates and uh, i think they they're in danger of alienating the actual audience that's already there so if you haven't checked out my uh, video on the actual rule changes themselves and check it out uh, and then get back to me but um, i think a wave of uh, resistance is forming against uh, the way world rugby is constantly tinkering and changing the laws without getting the laws they've already changed and tinkering, tinkered with right, you know? So they're constantly moving and moving and moving. And it reminds me of a certain government institution that I may have may or may not have worked for previously. And a lot of the management uh, within that institution, they, they justified their jobs by restructuring or changing the structure of the company every so often because that gave them something to do. Otherwise, they were kind of useless. And it really does feel like Rugby Union is uh, has been on that path for quite a long time now. One of the most egregious uh, statements in the uh, uh, release from World Rugby was uh, its description of scrums, uh, in it particularly being dead time. And I think that uh, stuck in a lot of people's uh, crow a little bit, to use an American expression. And uh, that gave them pause when thinking about these rule changes because uh, I think World Rugby kind of showed their hand a little bit there uh, when they used that expression, dead time, uh, to describe scrums. Because uh, speaking for myself, that's one of the most uh, interesting parts of a game is who gets scrum dominance i mean it's first phase possession so it's kind of a key component and uh, we've seen that in uh, kind of the value of uh, props particularly a tight head prop tight head prop these days is worth his weight in gold you know what i mean and they, they're some of the most high high paid uh, players in uh, rugby union and that's for a reason because if you can secure your own ball it gives you an attacking platform to uh, do everything else and again a unique 
characteristic of uh, rugby that's being uh, threatened potentially by these uh, proposed law changes. Another point that I think is worth mentioning is the uh, line-out throwing. So if a line-out is uncontested, then uh, if the throw is not straight, then uh, it won't be called back. And I think uh, that's kind of a, a separate point in terms of yes, okay, but uh, throwing the ball in at a lineout is such an integral skill to the position of being a hooker. And again, it takes certain uh, skills and cer certain expertise and a lot of practice to be able to do that correctly. I'm sure players who've played uh, as a lineout forward have really appreciated the skill of the hooker and in, in being able to deliver the ball well in the lineout. And again, it seems like it's leveling the playing they're trying to level the playing field and reduce the the skill level involved in the game and um, i don't think that is a uh, a correct decision ultimately i think that uh, the rugby public has spoken in this matter and they really don't want these changes that are being proposed by world rugby in fact uh, they understand that it's a threat to the actual uh, the the core of the game that we know and love and uh, I think most pundits from around the world, obviously South Africa were targeted by these rule changes, so they've been the most vocal uh, and they're a very passionate fan base. But I think most uh, pundits and most rugby supporters from around the world feel the same way. And that's what's been interesting about this uh, kind of reaction, is that it's uh, not only from one country or one rugby union, it's from all of the countries combined. I mean, everyone sees there's a threat to the identity of our, our game, the game we love. And uh, yeah, that's been uh, uh, kind of refreshing. Like rugby union is a very successful sport, make no bones about it. Maybe not the most successful sport in the world, but I can live with that, you know? And if World Rugby would uh, put their money where their mouth is and invest in more of the grassroots game, in the ga developing uh, game uh, countries around the world, then they'd be much, much better off for it. And I think uh, these rugby uh, proposals, the rule changes are a detriment on the whole to, uh, to rugby. So, um, yeah. That's uh, the final video I think I'll make on this. I just thought it needed a, like a, a full stop, a period. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you for the next one. Okay, bye-bye.